mindset that we also will be talking about technological advancements and whatnot, um, more so in the World War I, World War II era, but that was a good introduction to get us in the mindset. Um, just want to go over a few points quickly with the PowerPoint so that we can have an easier time with our little debate activity that will be that we will be doing to complete the lesson. So let's get to it. So just to refresh, um, these are some of the weapons that were used in World War I. Just your typical rifles, mortars, and machine guns. You have your um, your machine guns over here on the end, your rifles right here, and your mortars right here. Um, and the warfare style of World War I and sort of the wars before it is really key in comparison to the battle styles of World War II because this warfare was more so in the trenches and like I mean with meaning that when you would unfortunately come to have to possibly end your enemy's life, you would be looking at them, you would be like in contact with them. Whereas once we get to World War II, um, harming other people is not as like not as personal. There's a separation between the two. So yeah, these are the weapons used in World War I. And then we get to the weapons that are introduced in World War II. So I think many of us know about the Manhattan Project, the invention of the atomic bomb that took place actually right here in New York City. There was an immense creation of nuclear power during this time, um, missiles included, but most notably the atomic bombs um, that were used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These came to light during World War II. Um, gas, which was both used in warfare on the battlefield and unfortunately used in concentration camps. Um, not only did this have dangerous effects when it was used, but it also had prolonged effects that maybe did not surface until many years later in a person's life. So this is just an interesting weapon because its effects outlast the war in some cases. Tanks. Tanks were used in World War I. Um, we know that, but we know that they also got a bit of an upgrade when it came to World War II. Um, they just, the new tanks were able to do more terrain and have more assets attached to them. Submarines. Um, when I was going over this lesson, I think I got it confused with the Lusitania or something, but wrong, wrong war. Um, submarines, like, there was a, several, like, miniature battles on the side of World War II that were started by a submarine either sinking something or attacking a ship. But submarine warfare is actually really interesting when you get into it because, like, it's just bodies moving under the water and taking people down without other people's knowledge. Um, at one point, I believe there were radars invented to track the submarines, but until that point. And then encryption codes, these aren't necessarily a weapon, but I figured I'd include them because they are really fascinating. Um, encryption codes have been used forever, like secret codes, but when you really get into like the spy side of warfare or not, um, these encryption codes were used on the Allied powers in the Axis powers. I read a fantastic book, which unfortunately I'm forgetting the name, but it was about this group of women who worked with these encryption codes, and they were the ones that were writing them, deciphering them, and it's just really great. So if I think of it, I will send it to you guys to let you know. And I just wanted to point out something. These pictures on the side here were actually taken by my great grandpa. Um, that's him right there, squatting with the sheep and the top of the sheep. He was a soldier in World War II, which is where I think I definitely got like a large passion for this topic. Um, and it's fun that I'm able to teach it because I can use his pictures and his artifacts. So I included some other pictures from his own personal archive. Um, this is him right here. And sorry to go on weird tangents about my great grandma, but he was one of the only people in his troop that could speak German. So he was really. Um, they, they used him a lot for that, and he was able to translate with the locals and whatnot, which is what this picture is. He was conversing with a woman. I forget the context of the conversation. I know somebody in my family knows. <laughs> I forgot by right now. And then here's him on the train going home. Um, so yeah, that's just a really cool piece of family history. Another activity that I have planned, not for today, unfortunately, was maybe dating back in your own lives to someone who you have affiliated with any work in particular, but it's really interesting to look back into your own 
family history and make those personal connections, even though we're quite a few years out from that decade, almost century. So then the effects of water and sick chemicals last a whole day and travel activity here. The technological and scientific advances, um, your modern day computers, not modern day necessarily, but computers became more in use in your households and your offices um, post World War II. Um, the framework that that was set up um, also as like a part of technology of work. Improvements to the home. Um, so the minor details are escaping me, but I know there was a man who was working with radons during World War II to try and create another weapon, but he only hold accidentally played in my shape. So you can credit him to your microwave and to the good piece of bagels and whatnot. And medical advancements, blood transfusions, skin grafts started to grow. And um, other like medical procedures, they were the framework for those, although they had been doing them for quite some time at this point, the real solidified framework for um, procedures like that were sort of finalized and developed during World War II, as there were many skin grafts and blood transfusions that took place on the battlefield. And then another issue that sprung up in this war and many wars before it was bacterial infections. Um, a lot of soldiers on the battlefield and like the girls' trenches and whatnot that dealt with serious infections of all types. And in the trying to treat that, they kind of discovered the formula for what would be the formula of the creation of penicillin. So while penicillin did not directly come from World War II, it actually came a few short years afterward. Uh, they used the same like base groundwork for that to develop penicillin. Versus, and those are kind of like some good effects of the technological um, advancements of the war. Unfortunately, there was an uh, increase in the civilian death toll. Um, well, we all know that many, many millions of people perished in World War II that definitely should not have. Um, so these new weapons and advancements in technology were not did lead to the death um, of many, many people. And then illness from gases, we kind of talked about that, but those prolonged effects um, that nuclear power, like even seen in Chernobyl years later and whatnot, that had a huge effect and still actually continues to affect the people today. And then just another heightened sense of dangerous warfare. Um, typically warfare up until this point was just the soldiers against the soldiers, but now it became the soldiers against the civilians and just like uh, leadership groups against civilians. So it kind of transformed the way that war was fought. So we are going to have a little debate. Um, we'll do Riley on this one group and then you guys are another group. And what we're going to work on debating today, although seemingly questionable, I know we're all very well educated in this room, so I doubt there will be any issues. But you guys are going to be the scientists who created the bomb. And you are trying to convince myself that this is, that just like the bomb aside, that technology and science are advancing to a rapid point, and this is a good thing. You guys are going to be the group that is not so sure if that this, if these advancements are a great idea. Um, you're kind of cautious about the idea. Um, so you're trying to convince me that this is not the best for humanity. Um, for the sake of time, I want you guys to only come up with one point, and that, so that really shouldn't take long, but once you guys kind of have your argument defined, um, you don't have to write it down or anything, but maybe you can be a spokesperson for the group, and we will reconvene. I'll jump back and forth in case you guys have any questions, but what's this, like two minutes maybe? Okay, go for it. Thank you. 